the keys. Mother and I was supposed to go to the zoo the following Saturday to celebrate finishing all 30,000 cards. But when Saturday came, Mother had a migraine and had to stay in bed. I'm so sorry, she said. We've all been working too hard. You go on and have fun. I didn't think it would be too much fun by myself, but I went. On the bus, I thought about how Liz and I had often met at the zoo on Saturday afternoons last fall. Maybe she would be there today. I tried not to get too excited, but I ended up running all the way down the hill to the lion's cage. She wasn't there. I was disappointed. Instead, two young men were standing there. Their belongings spread out all over our bench. They were throwing stones at the lions. One of them, a big burly guy with a leather jacket, had bad aim. But the other, a blonde guy, had a strong arm. He hit the poor cats again and again, and there were no way, and there were, and there was nowhere they could run to get away. I opened my mouth to yell at him to stop when he turned around to pick up another rock, and I saw his face. It was red. I ducked down behind a bush, trying not to shake. What was he doing there? The zoo was my place, the place where I felt safe and comfortable, and he was ruining it. For the first time, I had an inkling of what it might be like to be Liz, to feel compelled to say something. And I actually had to recite the nines, times tables, to keep my mouth shut. So I was already thinking about Liz, which is maybe why it didn't quite register when I saw her walking toward me, right past Red and his friend. I stood up when I saw her. But that was stupid because Red might see me. So I ducked back down again. Of course, Liz had seen me. And through the bushes, I watched as she opened her mouth to call out my name. I jumped up again, throwing my hand over my mouth to tell her to be quiet. And she pointed over the monkey cage. My heart was pounding as she made her way over to me. Marley, what was that all about? Liz asked. At least she had the good sense to whisper. That was Red, I said. You walked right by Red. Liz went pale. Where? By the lion cage. Liz glanced back, though she couldn't see him from where we were standing. I didn't recognize him. Not without his football uniform. I don't think he knows what you look like, but if he sees you with me, I didn't have to finish the sentence. What do we do? Asked Liz. JT said he has the dynamite in the trunk of his car. So, said Liz, I was doing it again, thinking aloud. It seemed kind of dangerous to me. Maybe we should check. How? Asked Liz. On the bench where we met and you gave me the magic square book, I saw a football jacket and some beers. And I think there was a ring of keys. That's crazy, said Liz. It was crazy, but the police aren't going to do anything, I said. Daddy already called them. Well, said Liz, after a long moment, I guess it's up to us. I nodded. By the way, she said, it's nice to see you. Yeah, I said, you too. We spent the next hour hiding in the bushes, waiting to see if there would be an opportunity to snatch the keys. Red and his friend were drinking beer which wasn't really allowed at the zoo, and they were way too young anyways. But there was no one there to stop them. Finally, just when I was be beginning to think this would never work, they both went off to the bathroom, leaving their belongings on the bench, including the large ring of keys. I looked at Liz. This was our chance. Liz was here, Red was here, and his keys were on the bench. It couldn't be a coincidence. This was fate. We'd never get an opportunity like this again. Then I'll watch the bathroom, said Liz. You get the key. Before I could say another word, she ran off toward the bathroom. I glanced over at the lions. One of them lifted her head and looked at me as if saying, please save me from those rocks. Thinking about the rocks made me angry. And being angry made me forget about being scared. So I walked over to the bench and picked up the keys. It was a simple silver ring, 
but there must have been a hundred keys on it. Okay, so it was probably more like 15, but still. Why did a guy like Red need so many keys? It felt like my fingers suddenly swelled to three times their size, like cooked sausages splitting their skin as I tried to flip through all of them. There were two with the word Chrysler on top. I didn't know which one was for the trunk, so I decided to take both. The first key came off easily, but the second one kept slipping. Liz came running back around the corner. They're coming. I put the ring back on the bench, and we ran to the safety of the monkeys in the bushes. Red and his friend came back, picked up their stuff, and went deeper into the zoo. Liz sighed. Thank goodness they didn't notice anything was missing. But there were two keys, I said. I only had time to get one. I'd been clutching it in my fist so tightly it felt a little indentation on my palm when I opened my hand to show it to her. Liz nodded. Some cars have one key for the door and ignition and another key for the trunk and glove compartment. She picked up the key and looked it over before placing it back into my hand. Let's hope you got the right one. We ran up the hill to the zoo parking lot and clenched fist. My clenched fist with the key by my side. My heart was beating as loud as an airplane engine. No one paid us any attention at all. There were only a few cars in the parking lot. One of them was an old gray Chrysler Windsor. I glanced inside. There were fishing rods and a tackle box on the back seat of the car. Is this it? Liz asked. I nodded. It was your idea, she said. You try the key. I knew I had to do it. I took deep breaths, trying to remember that I was brave, but I couldn't move. I was literally frozen to the spot. I couldn't believe it. I was going to ruin our one and only chance to steal the dynamite back because it was too big for a coward to open the trunk. Then the lions did something I had never heard them do during the day before. They roared. It was just a little roar, but it worked. I counted two, three, five, and then tried the key in the lock. It got stuck. The lock was rusty, but the key probably wasn't the right one anyway. I sighed and tried once more. The key turned, and I heard a click. The trunk popped open. Inside was the dynamite. My old satchel, satchel, was in the trunk too, but the sticks had fallen out of it and were now stern all about the trunk. Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle, Liz said. JT was right. I glanced around the parking lot. There was no one there. If someone did see us, we were just two girls standing in front of an old open trunk. Let's go, Liz said. We'll call the police. No, I said. We have to take it. What are you talking about? I already called the police. I reminded her. They aren't going to do anything. If you tell them you saw it with your own eyes, Red will move it. Even if we leave the keys in the lock, he'll know someone was Liz's side. Of course you're right. We looked at the dynamite in the trunk. The cylinder stared up at us. I don't want to touch it, Liz said. Neither do I, I said. On the other hand, said Liz, if it's been rolling around in his trunk for a week now and hasn't gone off yet, surely it's okay to. She reached in and picked up a stick and placed it carefully into my satchel. Just like picking up a, cr a crawdad, she said. But neither one of us smiled. I picked up the next stick. No one blew up. It felt cool kind of like a crawdad. I placed mine, ca mine carefully in the bag, and then it was Liz's turn again. We worked in absolute silence. I was sweating by the time I got to the last stick. Liz reached in and picked up the bag. What do we do now? I asked. Take it to the police station and tell them we found it in the woods, Liz, sh Liz said, and shrugged. It's almost the truth. We started to walk away when I realized we'd forgotten to close the trunk. I ran back. I'm not sure what made me look in the trunk before I closed it, but I did, and there were two more sticks that had rolled out of the bag. 
Way in the back, I glanced towards the zoo entrance. No one was in sight. I just couldn't face the thought of leaving any loose ends. So I climbed into the trunk and reached the last two sticks of dynamite. But I accidentally kicked the lid as I scrambled in and it fell shut. Liz! I screamed. Let me out! That's when I realized I was still clutching the key in my hand. More voices. One I was afraid I recognized. I peeked out of an old rusted spot in the trunk. Red and his friend. They walked straight to the car. I could feel it lurch as they climbed inside. Red started the engine and drove off with me in the trunk.